All right, Lake of Land, this episode of the podcast is sponsored by Reflection Connection. For the latest in skincare and beauty products, go to Reflection Connection. That's connection with a K. All right, Lake of Land, buckle up. Let's get into today's show, boys and girls. Let's do it. Basketball, a game of giants. When he had to, he knew all the tricks. Oh, yeah. Purple and gold skies, boys and girls. Welcome back. Episode five. We in the building, Lake of Land. I am your host, as always, Seven Mitchell. Appreciate you guys coming back this weekend. We got a special guest joining us. We coming off of a loss last night, so we got so much to kind of unpack in today's podcast. So shout out to everybody in Lakers Nation. Shout out to the NBA community as a whole big up again to my partners in crime hank cole ba i know those guys are out today they got some things going on but they may pop up before the part is out but shout out to my team joining me today a man who has and wears many hats in this nba community if you guys are familiar with the best of seven sports talk my my form my first uh initial platform he came on very, very, very many hats. Journalist, producer, writer. I got the homie Nick Mack joining me this afternoon. Nick, what's up, brother? I appreciate the intro, my man, Seven. It's good to be back uh, on a different platform with you again yeah. to talk some basketball. Uh, season's getting down to the wire. Some exciting stuff going on, including your Lakers, my Mavericks. I know you all see me decked out in the Mavericks gear. Mm. I promise to be as unbiased as possible, <laughs> but you know, on a roll right now, so I'll just, we'll talk about it. But uh, no, oh, really, you know, thanks for having me. Um, happy Easter to everybody out there, you and yours, and uh, I can't right. wait to get into it. That's right, man. Happy Easter to everybody. Hope everybody have a safe weekend. We got an unbelievable episode number five. If you guys are in the live stream, in the live chat, shout out to you guys. Sensation in the building. I see you, man. We are about to rock and roll here. Episode number five of Lakerland. Let's get right into the show. We're not going to waste you guys' time. So last night, man, a very embarrassing performance by my Los Angeles Lakers after coming off of a five-game winning streak. They go lose to Indiana 109-90. to Shooting the basketball from the three-point line was just horrific for the team. I think that really was the deciding factor of the Lakers losing last night to Indiana. Now, overall, the season series, the Lakers did win the series over the Pacers. But also at the end of this game, I don't know if you guys saw it, but once again, LeBron James exits it, the, 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 um, sidelines before the buzzer is you know sounded and we've seen this time and time again nick did you catch any of last night's game and what's your thoughts on lebron james leaving the bench early when his team constantly loses should the nba should the team really look into this when it, when we talking about lebron's behavior um I got to be honest, man. I, I caught I caught a little bit of the game early. Uh, it was definitely a great game in the first half. I think it was only uh, a, a couple points at halftime. But um, as far as LeBron goes, I got to be honest. I was watching Duke last night. I'm a Duke fan, so mm. they, they were playing to make the Elite Eight, and they pulled it out last night, so shout out to them. Shout but out to anyway, the Blue Devils. When it comes to LeBron's behavior, my whole thing is um, I really don't think it's that big of a deal. I think it's something that – gets scrutinized because it's LeBron James and everything he does gets scrutinized. Uh, I think he's not the only one that does it, but I think it's the only one that the cameras immediately go to when he does it. Yeah. And I really don't think, I think it's a much bigger deal than, than it's being made out to be. I think he goes back, to, he's dealing with a serious ankle injury. He's been dealing with it for a long time. The foot injury he goes back to get treatment early when it's a blowout game like that. Um, but if he needed to be on the floor last night with his team, he would have been there. And he's shown yeah. that 
this entire season. He's shown that since he's been a Laker. If he could play, he's going to be on the court when it matters. So I, I think we you, you take the good with the bad when it comes to somebody of LeBron James's caliber and what he means to the team. I think you're absolutely right. My, my problem with this is just the optics, you know, and, you know, LeBron James over time has always been a master of manipulation and he's, he's always done little things to, to kind of create a storyline or, or a narrative. And, you know, it could definitely be because his injury going back, getting, um, you know, attended to a little bit early, but because we've seen him do this so many times, it's just a it's just a bad look from the optics. But you know, LeBron is an elder statesman. He's if one of the oldest, if not the oldest guy actively in the league. So, you know, he's going to get some leeway. But I was just wondering, like, should the team speak to him? Should the NBA because it is a bad look, and I don't want to see a trend of other up and coming players or even veterans leaving the game just because they lose and like yo, you got to take your your L's just like everybody else on your team. I think that's something that the team addresses behind closed doors. You know what I mean? Because if it's if it's not affecting them, if it's not bothering them, then you leave it alone. Obviously, you don't want to cause rifts where there aren't where there isn't trouble. Right. You know, um, if it is bothering them, if it does show poor character and poor leadership in their minds, they should speak up and talk to them about it. Yeah. But I th again, I think that's something a team handles behind closed doors. Is Darvin Ham, in your opinion, the type of coach that has the cachet to have that conversation with the LeBron James at this point in his career? I think that's going to be up to the players. I don't think Darvin mm. Ham is going to be the one to lead the charge on that. Okay. And you know what? That's just sitting back. I haven't commented too much on the Darvin Ham situation in L.A. I know the fans are not happy. I know that he ha has not had great moments and in making adjustments, especially this season. Um, but at the same time, uh, he's shown a distinct lack of leadership um, that I, I think he wouldn't be the guy to speak up. And, you know, that would be something like a players only thing I coming from this Lakers group. If it was an issue, I, I also see the, this Lakers group not having an issue with it. I think the media and the fans have far more, more of an issue. problem. Because when you think about the roster of the of the Lakers, who who is that voice that would even go there well, with LeBron? Yeah. Is it AD? Is it is it D? Is it D Lo? Like I don't even know too many of those guys on that team that would even go there with LeBron, even if it was a players only scenario. I so think AD is. would probably be the only one that LeBron would listen to in that situation too. Like right, you know, somebody maybe maybe like a Reeves. Who's kind of been under LeBron's wing since uh since coming there, you know? To a point. To a point. He might he might hear to them. I don't know if he'll listen. He might hear them. You know, I'll I'll, I'll give them that much respect. But when we look, you know if the team thinks, hey, this is supposed to be our leader, this is supposed to be our franchise, a cornerstone. Why is he leaving the bench early? Or if they understand, hey, this is what he does. When the games are over a little early, he gets back and he starts getting treatment before all of us. We know right. this. Right. Um, which is what he said publicly in the past. So I, I don't know. I, to me, it's not that big of a deal. He, he's not the first guy to leave a bench early. He won't be the last. But, I you agree. know. I agree. I agree. We'll have to you, see how again, it play out. 39 years old dealing with that kind of lingering foot injury. What did he say to JJ on the podcast? Can you imagine – Having uh 2003, 2003 yeah, 2024, and you've never changed the same tires. tires. Yeah, you know. So when you put it that way, it makes sense that he, he might things might look a little differently for him at the ends of these kind of games. I've always said preservation is going to be so instrumental in the success of LeBron remaining as an individual and the Lakers as a team. But when we talk about the Lakers as a squad. I want to talk briefly with you about the ceiling of the Lakers for the remainder of the year. Right now, L.A., I believe, is in ninth place overall in the Western Conference. Right now, we're sitting at 41 and 33 um, in the Western Conference. It looks like we are headed in this play-in tournament um, scenario. In a perfect world, Nick, and when I say perfect world, I mean 
availability. Guys don't get hurt. How far can this Los Angeles Lakers team honestly go to you? Even being a Dallas fan. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm keeping my bias out of this now. Um, No, I think we saw it last year. I think this team is dangerous when it comes to playoff time, and they showed that a year ago. Um, In this play-in tournament, you know, my Mavericks are are lingering, but luckily they're two games out of the seventh spot now with this latest surge. But the Lakers have been on on a roll too. They won five in a row prior to that loss last night. And uh, it's really going to come down to their depth once again. I think what we saw in the playoffs last year was guys like D'Lo and Reeves and Rui and Vanderbilt making major contributions that fueled that Western Conference Finals run. Because remember, LeBron was shooting the ball really poorly, especially from beyond the arc. It's much better this year. But in the playoffs last year, I think he was, what, 22% from beyond the arc? And they made up with that. Big games from D'Lo, big games from Reeves to get through the Warriors, to get through the Grizzlies. And, you know, nobody was really competing with Denver last year. But uh, this team is going to go as far as their depth takes them. And that's a lot of Western Conference teams this year, including my Mavericks. You know, Um, how how consistent can Hachimura be in the playoffs? How consistent can D'Lo be in the playoffs? D'Lo going three for 14 from the field last night was a major reason why they lost that game. Um. How's the health of the Lakers going to be? What kind of contributions can Gabe Vincent make in a playoff run if he comes back? Uh, What kind of contributions can Vanderbilt make on the defensive side of the ball if he comes back for the playoffs healthy? So there's a lot of unanswered things for the Lakers, but they are trending in the right direction, the same direction that I did see towards the end of last season. Right. Now, one thing I want to get out the way and get your opinion on is this narrative that the Lakers are better without LeBron James. Now, we've seen L.A. pull some big wins together this season versus Milwaukee, versus Boston, I believe the Clippers as well. But this weird narrative in the NBA community is now coming out that the Lakers are better off without LeBron James. What's your thoughts on that, Nick? Short-term and long-term. You you know where I stand on the whole all-time debate thing, you know, and how I think LeBron is right there with Jordan in the GOAT debate. Um, that being said, it has been 20 years. Can we stop with Mm. with this BS that any (laughs) team is better with LeBron James off the court? Are you the most intelligent basketball player? You've probably nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Yeah, their record says one thing. But in the playoffs, you seriously tell me you don't want LeBron James on the court because they're a better team without him on the floor, get out of here. That's the most ridiculous thing ever. It is, because it's not even about a want. It's a need. It's a, it's mandatory. You you cannot put your money, your rent money on Anthony Davis to, to lead, to do what's asked of LeBron. I don't even know if on Anthony Davis can do half of it on a consistent basis, on and off the because- basketball court. Look, what he did in Milwaukee the other night without LeBron on the court was special. It was a special performance. But can he do that against the likes of Nikola Jokic for a seven-game series consistently? Can he do that with the likes of who else he got out there? Rudy Gobert and Carl Anthony Towns, that tandem in Minnesota. Because these are the teams you're going to have to get through later in the playoffs. He's Early in the playoffs, too. If you're in the he's 0 and 10 in his career, Nick versus uh Demonis Sabonis for Sacramento, another team he might be meeting, you know, a division rival. He hasn't beaten Sabonis in his career, AD. Um, and, I, and, yeah, I, f- I feel like there's a lot of outliers in that situation, though, because when you look at it, it's like Anthony Davis should eat Demontis Sabonis's lunch every he, time he touches he the should. ball. It should just be a uh, I feel like there's just a lot of other things that contribute to that as well because like the Kings perimeter offense, the Lakers really have trouble with the Kings perimeter offense, the speed of Fox, the speed of Monk coming off the bench, who's a huge loss for them getting injured. But anyway, like with the Lakers, man, I I, look, that supporting cast is great for the, for the LeBron James's style of play with this Western conference. It's loaded. It's loaded with talent, and they are going to struggle with teams 
who can attack from all angles on the perimeter. And Davis, I mean, Davis staying consistent with the other elite bigs in the Western Conference right now. It's not any cakewalk. I, I just, I hope that the Lakers just get into a position eventually to have D'Lo play in his true position at the power forward. I've been watching Jackson Hayes, watching his growth and, and hoping that Jackson Hayes can evolve to being in, you know, a starting five for the Lakers to get AD back in his true position. Um, one guy who has really made it made a, a, a name for himself with this Lakers team is D'Angelo Russell. Nick, what's your thoughts on D'Lo's journey this season specifically because he had his name in, in trade talks and he has really shown a lot of value with this team, in my opinion. But what's your thoughts on D'Lo's um, second go round with LA? I mean, that was crazy to watch D'Lo's roller coaster this year because when the season started, first. 15 games, let's say, it was almost a certainty he was out of there. He was yep. going to be traded. He was struggling, couldn't shoot the ball. And then he, we literally watched him play himself out of a trade and now play himself into a vital role in it's on a team that needs every ounce of good basketball from him that they could get right now yep. uh, as they try to position themselves in a favorable play-in position. Because like you said, I think it's pretty much guaranteed they're going to be in the play-in. Just where they are in the play-in yep. remains to be seen. Uh, but Delo's so important to this team's success. And like I was saying about last night, him going three for 14, team loses by 19, you do the math. Kill us. They kill us. Um, when, he, when, he can, when he can attack and be aggressive from that point guard position, um, it's definitely better off. For, for the Lakers because he's sm smart enough, has the wherewithal to find his shooters or find his cutters um, and not force up a shot. But And when he's cooking, when he's feeling it, you know, th there's almost nobody in basketball you'd rather watch on a hot streak. It almost doesn't hit the net, you know? So, but again, streaky. He's the one, the he's the one caveat, Nick, when we had that conversation about the Lakers being better without LeBron he is the one player, and you bring up his uh, aggression and him at being in attack mode. He does that to the max when LeBron James is not on the basketball court. Individually, I do feel like we get the aggressive D low when LeBron is not out there on the floor because he's not looking over the shoulder. He don't want to make the mistake, um, you know, that he normally doesn't. And, and and we see a lot of players do that with um, LeBron James as a teammate. So I think individually, some guys can shine more or less when LeBron is not out there. But as a whole, you know, to win games, it, you know, you have to have LBJ. But, you know, I love the aggression from D'Lo. I've been very impressed because I really didn't I really didn't embrace his return to L.A. But he has definitely shown him to be one of the more valuable guys that we have. Uh, do you think that the Lakers should resign him, give him give him a deal or you think he's going to walk? That depends what they're willing to spend on because there's definitely going to be a team out there looking at what D'Lo is doing for this Lakers team this year. And they're going to have a little bit more money in the pot possibly. Yeah. But I think D'Lo has found a, comfort a comfortability and a home in Los Angeles. So I think it's going to take them a lot to get pride away from there if the Lakers are willing to have him back. If I was the Lakers and what he has done, um, what is he, he's proven he can do under the bright lights with them so far, I would give him a deal. I would give him a one or two year deal again. For sure. This is Laker Land, boys and girls, episode number five. We are locked and loaded. We just coming off a conversation of D'Angelo Russell. I want to skip the beat and go to my guy, Goat James, LBJ, LeBron. Nick, I know where you stand at when we had this conversation about who's the greatest of all time. You know, we yeah. will disagree. We will agree to disagree, but. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you this, because it's, it's a lot that has happened um, mm -hmm. for LeBron since you and I linked up the last time. A thousand percent. What if what if anything has changed about your opinion with LeBron in this GOAT status? And is there, is there anything that he can do now to change it in your mind? Hmm. Here's the thing. And, and you know, I, I'm, I'm going to be as unbiased as I possibly can about this. Um, 
LeBron James, it's like a 1A and 1B for me, man. Like, it, it is so close, and it really goes about what each person values in their criteria. And I think at this point in our lives, if you have an opinion, it is not changing. Um, if what LeBron James has done to this point does not make him the greatest player ever in your eyes, uh, then then that's probably not going to change unless he goes out there and has one another epic finals MVP performance, delivers another t- title to Los Angeles. That will make me say, you know, hot damn, he's 39 years old delivering this kind of performance. I have nothing left to say. Mm. Uh, All-time scoring leader happened since last time we talked, 40,000 points. Um, He continues to rewrite the NBA history books. And that that says something to me. That speaks volumes. And it's it's no longer like – I I just find it crazy when people try to troll and have him outside the top five. Or he's barely right, inside their right, top ten. Right, right. To me, it's one and two, <laughs> and like you all can debate the rest. And and honestly, whoever you have right now, I don't feel any tor- sort of way for who you think is the goat, unless your goal is to attack the other player. Right. You know what I mean? Like if you could prove your guy's case without attacking Jordan or out of, without attacking LeBron, to me, those are the most impressive cases. I respect that a hundred percent. I definitely respect that a hundred percent. All right, well, like, man. Let's get if you're gonna well, sit here and tell me LeBron's the go, I can't argue with you, man. <laughs> like you know, it's a I just look at it like this. And and like you said, man, if whatever opinion you've had, I'm a, I, I'm assuming nothing is going to change that. Not you, but just the community as a whole. Because before, you know, the last time you and I linked up. He didn't surpass Kareem's record. Yeah. He didn't surpass 40,000 points. So he has done those things. He's done some other things. Um, and still people feel like Michael is that quote unquote one a, um, is it safe to say that there is no respectfully, and this is Lakerland Kobe is not in this go conversation. Can we put that to rest or should we redefine the definition of GOAT? Well, I've always had Kobe higher up than a lot of people. Like, he's in my top five, probably. Um, But as for being in the GOAT conversation, I I don't think that is – I don't think that's possible as far as GOATs. Is it because he's more of a carbon copy of Michael or is it because he he didn't do enough? Um, I think once again, for me, like when it comes down to it, it's the losses on the big stage. Yeah. I saw him melt down in 2004 against Detroit. You know, I I saw him fall apart at the end of the 2008 series as well. So I didn't see that. I didn't see that from Jordan (laughs) in the finals. You know, I didn't, as far as melting down, I seen it from LeBron once. 2011. Yeah, you know, and that's what keeps Mm-mm. literally it's the things that minuscule that keeps somebody from being the goat for me. Gotcha. Because right, it's Nick, that let's... when you get to that level of play, when you're being considered an all time great, it's literally little things like that that separate that, that separate you from the rest. That's true. That's true. That's true. And the consistency of it, you know, I yeah. you can't just look at bullet points. You have to also look at the consistency of it. You know, the dominance of it. So I respect that. Definitely. All right, Laker Land, let's get into our TikTok segment of the show. This is our first TikTok topic. Real brief. Nick, which NBA player had the better Laker career? Anthony Davis or Paul Gasol? I think right now, Uh for now, you got to give it to Powell. You got to give it to Powell. And, and here's what I'll say. Prior to the Lake ass acquisition of him in 2008, that was not a finals team. And they proceeded to go to three straight finals, back-to-back championships in 2009 and 2010. Arguably, Pau Gasol was the more valuable Laker in 2010 than Kobe Bryant. And 
And I know Kobe won finals MVP and Kobe had a great series. I'm not, this is not a knock on Kobe. This is to elevate just how good Pau Gasol was. Because I feel like a lot of people forget just how important and valuable he was during those early years he was there. The late 2000s and early 2010s. Those yeah. championship years. Now, as far as Davis, the injuries have hindered a lot. Now, when he was fully healthy, they were NBA champions. And the way he played on that championship run, arguably better than any championship run Gasol had as a Laker. But again, we're talking about second options here. One had LeBron, one had Kobe. Two, two play with great versions of all-time greats. You know, so th that's hard to judge. But for now, I think you got to give it to the guy that went to three straight NBA finals and was back-to-back -back NBA champions. Um, but Anthony Davis's story in Los Angeles is not done being written yet. And that's the reason why I totally disagree with you, Nick. You know, I really got to talk to the bosses about your take on this one because I thought you was <laughs> going to come. <laughs> you know, I thought we was going to see the light together on this one. I see in the live chat, they also agree in Powell Gasol. Listen, everything you said about Powell was absolutely spot on. But I will argue that I could say the same for Anthony Davis in a sense. Not so much as resume as far as, you know, back-to-back -back champions. You know, that's that's already written. But Pau Gasol was – they wouldn't have won that without Pau. So I agree with his value. But I will also argue that in 2020, the Lakers would have not won without Anthony Davis, right? right. Now, Pau has never been the number one for the Lakers. Neither has Anthony Davis for now. But you saying that the story has not been written is the key to me because Anthony Davis has the potential to really lead this team after the LeBron era, potentially to something special. Powell was never built to do that. He was always going to be the Robin. So I feel like, man, to be a champion as an individual player, I think on both ends of the court, AD was better than Powell. And then he has a bigger upside than Powell. I would go with Anthony Davis. All right, I, I see that, and you know what? You bring up some good points. Uh, I just want to counter one thing. Okay. Here's the thing for me: Anthony Davis has all the potential and talent in the world to be a greater Laker than Pau Gasol. I'm not going to deny that at all. I will say this: though the production may look a little different in Anthony Davis's numbers. Uh, on both sides of the ball, may exceed those of Gasol's. Gasol was like consistently, he was going to give you the 17, the 10, maybe three or four dimes. Um, he was going to kill you from the high post. Right. And he was going to give you elite defense most of the time. Davis, I have seen give you elite performances and then not show up. I remember last year in the 2023 playoffs, we're talking about, Anthony Davis not showing up in odd number games. You know what he's I mean? He's had like, a couple would, games this he would season. Have that game he's had a couple could... games this season where he's had like zero points in an entire half. Yeah. You know, um, for, for me, when I look at consistently what Gasol provided next to Kobe, that that makes a difference. Gotcha. And it resulted in more team success. Gotcha. So far. Now, gotcha. when Davis comes out and he is elite for an entire playoff run, leads the team, or is that elite second option um, to a championship or even to the NBA Finals, we're having a different conversation. If the Lakers win the Larry O'Brien trophy this season, we can revisit this conversation. Oh, absolutely. That's a real, gotcha. that's a, definitely a different topic. Got you, got you. All right, people, this is Laker Land episode number five. Make sure y'all tap in, smash that like button, subscribe to our platform if you guys are new. Podcast is available on all listening platforms. Make sure, of course, guys, just a couple reminders before we get into our next topic of the show. If you guys want to join our Laker watch parties for all the Laker games, come on over to our playback room. That's playback.tv slash Lakerland. We give out free VIP access to all the Laker games. We have dope watch parties for all the Laker games. We also got exclusive content 
Lakers related in our playback room. So come over and support. It's free. Go to playback.tv slash Lakerland. Follow the room and get yourself free VIP access. We also just opened our Lakerland store. So we got some merchandise and apparel available. Links are in the description. We got free shipping options as well as discounted items. So make sure you guys support the Lakerland podcast. We definitely appreciate you guys and all that you do for us. We got Nick Mack in the building, man. We about to get into our next topic here on the podcast. Nick, I want to talk about former athletes becoming media because you are on a, the uh, on the original side of this map. And now that social media has come into play, we've gotten a lot of personalities, a lot of former athletes who have kind of jumped into this realm of being quote unquote media. What's your thoughts now in 2024 of all these sports platforms, Draymond, Gilbert Arenas, Paul George, everyone seems to have a podcast. You being in the media yourself when it wasn't cool, what's your thoughts on how this thing is kind of playing out to the NBA community? Um, you know, I think that first of all, uh, they're attacking a in a good way. They're um attacking something that is going to make them money well past their play. You know, their playing days. They can make them money, like JJ Redick. You know, he's he's getting a bag right now. Oh yeah, we're talking basketball. He's a great basketball mind. He's got a podcast with LeBron James, which no one else in the world can say. You know, <laughs> you know, so there's it's just um, it's a different time for sure, but I like it. I think what a lot of people get uncomfortable with is it kind of shatters this this wall of what we think these guys are like or what we think it's like on the road or playing basketball for a career, you know, and it kind of shatters that the uh the notions that we had about these things yep yep um and it, it, there's a lot of uncomfortability with that but at the same time i i love it i love getting the insight um i think the it gets outrageous of course with everybody wants to be number one and they want to say the most outrageous things they want to make the most headlines that kind of stuff gets a little crazy like gilbert right. arenas takes it to a different level sometimes kendrick perkins takes it to a different level sometimes um, I think they've all done it. I think right. we all do it at one point in our careers too. Um, Cause that's I what like the algorithm demands. It seems work. like that's what the exactly. public wants at the end of the day. Exactly. So you I like clicks and views at the end of the day. They're yep. nice. You know, yep. Yep. Uh, they pay. <laughs> that's a fact. But See? at the same time, you know, um, I think, you know, what I've tried to maintain my whole career is just authenticity, unbiased. I can't do the bias super van thing. It's just like not in me because right. I cover everything from all angles. Right. So it's like, how can I really approach things with a, with a heavy bias? But that being said, it's, it's really cool to get like this Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart um, podcast. That's been great to watch, yep. you know, them having Isaiah Hart and Stein guys, you would never have access to 10, 15 years ago talking. It's amazing. It's amazing, and I think it's I think it's really cool hearing some of the uh, unheard of stories. Yeah, and I think uh, just depending on how you deliver it, it could be really instrumental. You know, what JJ and LeBron is bringing to the table. You know, I think that it's going to help Beautiful. the education side. You know, which has definitely been missing That's in the circuit. Um, let me ask you this though: when we talk about because there's always that agenda of because I've played the game, you can't tell me anything or I know more than you. You know, we've always had that fight with 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 media personalities and, uh, you know, athletes. What's your thoughts and your take on that, Nick? Just because you play the game, does that mean that your take on things is always right? I don't know about always right. But I do take everything a professional athlete would say to me about competing in the NBA as as gold. You know what I mean? Because okay. 
I can't sit here and have a conversation and accurately describe to anybody what it's like being a player in the NBA or what it takes to even become a player in the NBA or reach that level. I can't, I can't sit here and say that. Um, I think that's why I stick to the things I stick to when I'm writing and when I'm doing right. my content, because, <laughs> you know, I can't go crazy on somebody. I've never walked 10 feet in your shoes, shoes before, right. you know, right. But at the same time, I think people who have studied the game intensely, talked about the game, written about the game, and, and immerse themselves in the game, I think anybody can sit at the table and have a conversation. But I think I, anybody that knows the game knows within three minutes who the people are that really know it and love it and who the pretenders are. I feel like that's like an automatic, oh, okay, you're a troll. Oh, okay. You, you know, you're here for entertainment. You're not here for basketball. Right. There, there's a lot you can decipher within five minutes. I think it does definitely need to be a level of respect, a level of balance, because like you said, who are you to go against what the professional players actually said about a certain topic if they're the ones that actually been there? But I do think something has to be said about the eye test, you know, from a, an analyst or just a fan's perspective. I think players have to respect the fact that even though one individual may not have literally played the game, if you are studying and watching and analyzing, you will see have a perspective, maybe from a different lens, but you will generate a perspective. And I just think athletes, former athletes, need to respect that if they are going to be in this media realm because a lot of people feel like what they say is law because they've played the game before. But I just feel like, man, if you've watched it, the eye test will tell you what's good and what's bad. I don't need to be a professional we'll say, to do that. You know? Something funny along these lines. Did you see what White Chocolate Jason Williams had to say about Brian Windhorst? Yep, yep. Facts. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like I'm sitting there laughing and I'm like, yo, he's got a point. <laughs> like at the Me? same time, you know, like, damn, that's that's savage, but oh, he's got a point. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I think there's there's gotta be a balance. Like, there's no doubt to me that Brian Windhorst knows the game, but at the same time, the messenger don't exactly match the message. Who is the who? who who's your favorite, or who you think is the best um, athlete media personality out right now? Athlete media personality out right now. Ooh. Former athlete that's in the game right now. They got a podcast. So do you have a favorite? Mm. You know. Um, I'll always be a fan of Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson. Uh, okay. All the smoke, all the gotcha. smoke is one of that's a must listen every time they're on. In my opinion, uh, KG and Paul Pierce are doing their thing too, and I love yep. what they they're bringing to it. They're bringing in the entertainment and the knowledge, and and the uh, just just all of it. And it's just the two of them, and they're like best friends, you know, just talking the game and talking current storylines too like they're not yep. just flashing back to their playing days they give you a great mix of everything um so i think those are my favorites but yeah de definitely kg and paul pierce up there right now got you got you you know gilbert gilbert gills arena you know they they be having a little bit of drama but you know i like i, I like gill's show do i do really like Gil's show and and I, and I like the potential of lebron and jj right what they you know have going on i, I hope to see more of that but um, the yeah, guys are doing their thing. Shout man. out to I'm Gills like... Arena. They had some of my content on Fadeaway World on there that they were just. Oh, doing. really? Shout out to them. Yeah. Dope, dope, yeah. dope. All right, man. Let's get into another TikTok segment here on Lakerland, boys and girls. Make sure, again, y'all smash that <laughs> like button. Up to the channel, boys and girls. Let's get right into it. So, real quick, Nick. Let's play guess this NBA play. I'm just going to pull up a couple childhood picks of NBA players. I want you to guess who okay. these guys are. Let's start off with this young man. Guess this NBA player, Nick. That's KD. KD That's easy. all day, making that easy. All right, let's get into the next one real quick here on Lake Atlanta. Guess this NBA player, Nick. 
Oh, uh, that's D Book. D Book from the Phoenix Suns. My man Nick is two for two. <laughs> Last but not least, Nick Mac. Guess this NBA player. Wow. That's, that is one of the best shooting guards to ever play this game, Mr. Mm. Dwayne Wade. Mm. <laughs> I would have called him Mr. Overrated, but I'm gonna let that go because I don't have en- <laughs> I don't have enough in the tank to really go there. But you know, shout out to D Wade, man. This is the Laker Land Podcast episode number five, man. Shout out to everybody in the building. We're about to get into our exclusive interview part of the show. The reason, the main ingredients of why I brought my dog. Nick Mack on the show today. Now, as I told you guys at the top of the top, Nick is a guy in the NBA world that wears many, many hats. Nick, kind of go by briefly with the people, you know, your background, your history, what that resume looked like, because I definitely got some questions to ask you, but, you know, just give the people a little bit of background of what you've had going on in the NBA community. Um, So my career basically, my career basically jump-started during COVID, uh, reached a lot of boredom being stuck at home. So I started a sports blog. Um, before I knew it, I got picked up by uh, to be a producer with the Ryan Show FM, which is a nationally syndicated uh, radio show oh, hosted by Ryan Vernell, who I went to high school with, and Mr. Cheeks of the Lost Boys, rap, the rap group from Queens, New York, yep. back in the 90s. Um, so that was a lot of fun. I got to do a one-on-one interview with uh, – Alan Houston and Sugar Ray Leonard to kickstart everything. And then um, I got involved with the Hugh Jackson Foundation. I started working for coach, former NFL coach uh, Hugh Jackson. I was interviewing um, different players about their foundations and charities. So that was that was a really dope uh, venture. Dope. And that opened the door for a lot of other things. Um, and meanwhile, Ryan got hooked up with Fox Sports Radio in Rochester, New York. So I'm now a contributor with uh, Fox Sports 1280 and Fox in uh, mm. Rochester, New York as well, every every week. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Thank you. That's uh, definitely a big one. We got some big news coming up. Ryan is pairing up to do a New York Giants football show with a former Super Bowl champion, New York Giant. So nice. that is going to be a ne- that's going to be announced uh, soon. I don't want to spoil the the full surprise, but can't wait for that to drop. Y'all are going to go crazy for that, especially if you like football. Um, the guests are going to be insane, of course. Dope. So that's something to stay tuned. And uh, then a little over two years ago, uh, I took a shot and I became an NFL, uh, no, sorry, NFL, NBA journalist with FadeAwayWorld.net. Um, that recently... Uh, I, we parted ways recently. It was a, um, more more so on my part. I had some things I had to take care of behind the scenes, but I'm currently taking a respite from writing uh, with with the NBA. But I'm still contributing weekly and nightly, sometimes as far as content creation and uh, to the radio goes. So well, no, let me ask you, Nick, because you know Fadeaway is definitely an established platform in our game what was it the experiment like for you you know just working with them throughout the time that you did uh i gotta give a huge shout out to fadeaway world man they really treat uh their employees and the writers uh, very very well um not just talking financially i'm just talking about how much they you know they care about their writers what goes on with their writers so and it's not just a team of writers it's also a team of graphic designers, news platform people, people chasing down stories. <clears throat> right. So there's a whole team, whole squad over there that really, uh, really took care of each other. That are a really good team, and that's why they've made the progress they've made so far. And uh, shout out to them, man! It was a really great experience. I don't think it really could have gone any better. I got to live my dream for two years, you know, and uh, and be rewarded handsomely for it. So. Dope. I wish them nothing but the best, nothing but the most success in the future. And I know it's coming their way too. Going back before COVID hit, 
you know, were there anyone in your radar that was doing this before that kind of motivated or inspired you? Like what made you take this direction? Was it just the fact of being stuck indoors and trying to figure something out to do? Or was there someone um, maybe before that did this? I think there was just, uh, I was looking for a way to get out of my whole life. I'd been like in physical labor and I, you know, I'm only, in, you know, I'll be 35 next week and I'm not really in the, like my, I beat my body up from the right. ages of 15 to 29. So uh, I, I really just wanted to get out of that. I knew we were going to be stuck at home for a while and it turns out it was a while. So I tried to just kind of scratch and claw my way into the sports industry Right. And um, I think what really transpired during that time was when I got I got sober a little before COVID hit. So um, that had a lot to do with it as well. And the support system I have at home with my wife and three kids, you Shout know, out without to them. them and and supporting my dream, I, this wouldn't have been possible at all. Um, but also my late brother, he's he was a huge influence on me my entire life, and um, we he passed away unexpectedly in November, 2021. And that's when things really like I took hold of my dream and it was like, all right, I, I got a bigger purpose now. That's right. And um, that it wasn't long after that, that I got the job with fadeaway world and it went from there. That's dope. That's dope. What would you have to say as far as advice, Nick, for any up and comings, that maybe consider writing or, you know, just getting into the game, what advice would you give some up and comers that are thinking of getting into this realm? You can't crack into this industry without putting out your work. So I don't, you know, you can overthink it. You can excuse the language. You can mind fuck it um, all you want. Yep. But at the same time, if you sit there and you ponder and you second guess yourself and you don't put it out there for people to see and you don't share it um, and you don't do all you can to get just any eyes on it, accept the feedback, the good and the bad. You got it. You got to get yourself out there. This is not something this is not for the timid. This is not for the shy. This is not for the faint of heart when it comes to your self-esteem. Um, you're going to be tested. Those things are always going to be tested in this industry. People aren't are going to agree with you. Stay out of the comment sections on your work. Right. I, I promise you'll be fighting for your life in those comment sections. <laughs> <laughs> but I promise you, engaging in the negativity is only going to hold you back. So embrace the positive, block out the negative, take chances. Reach out to those people you want to interview. Um, the worst you're going to be told in this industry is There's no. no. Yep. Yep. That's a fact. The worst you're going to hear is no. Can't do it. I've been trying to interview Muggsy Bogues for six years. and I've You and not both. And he's from Baltimore. I mean, it's ridiculous. I got to talk to the bosses <laughs> about Muggsy. God, Yo. Yo, man, it's crazy. And he's like a really good dude and everything. Yep. He does a lot for the youth in, in his yep. area. He does a lot for Charlotte still, from what I know, for the Hornets and stuff. So, But you're just going to be told no. And they're really respectful about it every time they say no. So, like, again, man, I've been rejected by huge names. I've got lucky to talk to the people I've been able to talk to in my life. Um, but you're never going to find out. You're never going to reach those levels if you don't take the chance. So bet on yourself. Because this is the industry where you can cash in big by betting on yourself. Word. So, Nick, like I said, man, you've wore many hats from producer to NBA writer, journalist, things of that nature, stuff I probably don't even know about. But what is your favorite? What 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 kind of really gets you going as far as the many things that you are involved with or just able to do? What's that one thing that you really locked in with? I think that I've been able I've been fortunate enough to talk to a lot of heroes of mine growing up. And I think that's the coolest aspect, obviously, like from the outside looking in, people are like, man, you got to sit down for an hour with Sugar Ray Leonard, one mm -hmm. of the greatest fighters ever. Yeah, that's really dope. But really, it's understanding and getting a deeper look into how, how human they really are. Because when you all you've ever seen is them on TV or online or their highlight videos or their interview clips or stuff that goes viral on the internet. 
um, to see them in a more relaxed, normal, quote unquote, environment and get an insight into the humanity of 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 sports has been a beautiful thing for me. Right. Um, you know, me and me, and, it turns out me and Sugar Ray Leonard ain't all that different. We've both battled our share of substance abuse issues. We overcame odds. Yep. You know, he became a world champion. I, I did not, but <laughs> but in your own you right. Know, in your own right. Yeah, but I achieved things I never thought I would. So I think that's I think that's just really cool when you can connect with people you've never dreamed of connecting with. Um, but but again, I think it's also being able to reach people I'd never be able to reach and interact with people I'd never be able to interact with, such as yourself. Yes, sir. And talk about basketball for 50 minutes on a Saturday afternoon. Yep. It's a blessing. That's a fact. So. Beautiful thing. Now, Nick, of course, as you guys can see here on Laker Land is a Dallas Mavericks fan, so we got to show a little bit of respect today. <laughs> Nick, let me just get your thoughts, man, on your team. You know, last year y'all picked up Kyrie, went five and eleven, didn't make the playoffs. Y'all got, I believe, reportedly fined for a tank. It was a lot of lot going on in Dallas, but seemed to kind of trying to turn a corner. Give me some thoughts on your team right now. So, even from the beginning of the season, so the beginning of the season, the Mavericks. They struggled. Kyrie had a freak accident. Um, I think Lively fell on his ankle. And we struggled to find any continuity. Um, they started out hot in most games and then completely melted down in the fourth quarter. The last, yep. like, eight minutes of the fourth quarter. That was the story of the Mavericks up until the trade deadline. Um, what, those moves at the trade deadline, Daniel Gafford, P.J. Washington, they've been huge defensively for for the Mavericks and on the glass. And I think it's enough to – you're not going to slow down. You're not going to stop a Nikola Jokic, but you can disrupt him. And I think the length the Mavericks how, have now and the attack they have on the perimeter when Luka and Kyrie are playing in sync like they have been, it, it's scary, man. It's scary how efficient Dallas can be now. That being said, their depth it has been horrifically inconsistent. And I'm talking about the Tim Hardaway Jr., who was an early season six-man of the year candidate and then yep. completely fell off the map. I'm talking about I'm talking about even PJ Washington has been inconsistent finding his jumper. Or Dante Exum, who's had his big moments with Dallas this year, last night being one of them, huge win over the Kings. Um but he's also been inconsistent. Maxi Kleber, always injured, uh, especially this time of year. Um, so Josh Green, injured right now, hasn't been a part of this six-game winning streak at all. Um, have had a huge game against a surging Houston team on Sunday, yep. you know, who has won 11 in a row. Well, yep. So it's it's definitely an interesting right now for the Dallas for Dallas. However, when Luka and Kyrie are in sync the way they have been, even on rough shooting nights, finding it in the second half, they've completely flipped the script. They've yep. struggled out of the gates, and they are closing games with tremendous efficiency and, and aggression. Yeah, your boys are looking good. Let me ask you one more thing about your team. You know, everybody feel like their team is going to win the championship. But just realistically, knowing the game, studying the game, watching the game, when you look at your unit, Nick, do you feel like you have the a unit that could literally win the Larry O'Brien Trophy this season, or do you, or deep down inside, you know there's still a piece missing? I know there's a piece missing. I, I know there's a piece missing. I now could they shock me and make another conference finals run? Wouldn't put it past them. You know, I, I didn't expect them to make that run in 2022, to be honest. Yeah. Um, But that was only two years ago. And to me, this roster is better than that roster. So, like, <clears throat> could it happen? Possibly. Sure. Am I banking on it? Hell no. You know, <laughs> I just 
The West is so loaded with talent right now, man. At the yeah. the top of that conference with Minnesota, you know, with with Oklahoma City, with Denver. I, I think it's Denver's conference to lose again. At the end of the day. You know, of course, I think a lot of people feel that way. Um, can you see now, him in when Luke, you get you past and the Joker three seed, up? though, I think, I think the Mavs can hang with anybody below the three seed easily. Okay. In the seven-game series. Clippers, easy. Pelicans, all day. So the Kings, I think they've proven with back-to-back wins over, wins over the Kings, must win games that they can hang with the Kings. So not worried about that either. Um so I agree. I agree. All right, boys and girls, last topic here on the Lake of Land podcast, episode number five. We got Nick Mack in the building. Last topic of the day. Now, Nick, this is just a continuation of a topic that we had on the best of seven uh last year. We talked about the impact of the international players of the NBA and how it seems to be kind of a takeover when we talk about the 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 uh success individually and as teams you know we talking on we talk about Luka and Nikola Jokic and stuff like that um does the are the international players right now in today's game the best that the NBA has to offer let's start there I mean look at it top 4 MVP candidates this year all international including SGA with with the Thunder he's Canadian yeah. you know there is I think the international pool of talent is better than it's ever been. I think that's a, quite the obvious stance take. But look, you got – you could honestly say that five of the best players in the NBA right now today are international. You got Luka, you got Giannis, you got Jokic, you got SGA, you got Embiid. True. Now, whether or not you consider Embiid international because he's going to be playing USA – in the, in the Olympics, throw that up in the air. But, I mean, but even after that, you've got guys. you got Wimby, who's gonna, who level. can be a generational talent. Wimby, Sabonis, um, even like Franz Wagner in Orlando. Chet Holmgren, like I think. He's is... quite a damn young, a damn good young player. Um, right. R.J. Barrett still has got yeah. a lot. You know, there's stuff that can open up there for him, especially in Toronto if he stays in Toronto. Yeah. Um, so I just, it's, it's crazy how, how it's kind of done a flip in the last decade or so, but, um, yeah, I think the international right now, they have a stranglehold on, on the, the NBA game. at the, as, as far as player, individual players go. And it just so happens that look, Milwaukee's pretty damn good. Dallas is a damn good, scary playoff team. Jokic and Denver look like they could go back to back as champions. Yep. The Oklahoma City Thunder have uh, the best record in the West. Yeah. This is no so. Yeah. Yeah. That's a fact. Nick, brother, I appreciate level you. Of so team much. Ball I see. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Absolutely right. But brother, I appreciate you so much, Nick, joining Lake Land this afternoon. So much. I uh, love to be at all Lakerland. Out of here, um, Nick. Let everybody know where to follow you at, bro. Before we sign off, uh, mainly you can just see me on my Twitter at Nick Mac NBA. You'll see me. Uh, it's a picture of me in a Fox Sports poster. I think is my profile <laughs> picture. So nothing, uh, nothing special. But you'll see me uh, mostly on Twitter. You can see my stuff. No doubt, no doubt, man. Shout out to my brother Nick Mac, man. Big up. To Stensation, man. Shout out to my guy, man. Big up to everybody in Laker land, the Laker nation, as well as the NBA community as a whole. I am your host, Seven Mitchell, with the Laker land staff. Shout out to my brothers, Cole, B.A., and Hank. Once again, guys, come over to our playback room. That's playback.tv slash Lakerland. Follow our playback room for all Laker watch parties. We're giving free VIP access. Plus, we got a lot of other things going on there in our playback room. So come over, have some fun with us in the Laker Land playback room. And also another reminder, visit our Laker Land merchandise store. Links are in the description. We got shirts, sweatpants, hoodies, mugs. We got a lot of little dope things. We kind of rolling out down the pipeline. So we're getting things in order. 
Nick, once again, bro, I appreciate you joining us here at Lake of Land. I hope you and your family stay safe. Have a happy Easter. And we are out, brother. All right, now. Peace, everybody.